Hello everybody, this is Craig from Nightwolf Games, and today I'm going to do a review for Dad of Boy. <laughs> or Illiterate Dad of Boy. No, see, God of War, come on focus, asshole. God of War is the, uh, is the reason that I haven't done a video in a week and I haven't done a stream going on two weeks now. Um, I got God of War the day it came out, which was a Friday, and I didn't stream that Saturday. God of War is so fucking good... That I didn't stream the next Saturday. I didn't put any videos up because I wanted to stay off of YouTube completely because I didn't want anybody spoiling it for me. And I was reading how just in the thumbnails there were spoilers and blah, blah, blah. Now, one thing you got to know about me while, while I'm talking about God of War is I'm a huge fan of the first three. I'm not a fan of Ascension. Uh, Ascension. I like Chains of Olympus. But as, as far as God of War 1, 2, and 3 goes, I think they were fantastic. God of War 2 being the best. Um... But this, my friend, this is how you reboot a series. Um, like I said, I didn't want anything to do with YouTube. I had a smoking hot video prepared for you guys that uh, is going to actually be the next video about the uh, the fan theory I have for um, uh, uh, Silent Hill 2. A Silent Hill 2 video. Knowing that that's, those would be my most viewed videos, I opted to do a review, which actually is my least viewed videos because I think this game is fantastic. I played it beginning to end. It did not leave my PS4 until I was done. I didn't play anything else. I even stopped playing Mortal Kombat and I play that shit every day. I didn't play anything else while I played God of War. I played that shit beginning to end. Um, it's fantastic. And I still have a lot more side stuff to do. I did a lot of side stuff, but then I was like, I need to hurry up and muscle through the story so I can go back to doing videos. So that aside, just the um, like the, how immersive it is. That that's that's it. That's one hook of it. I know it sounds like I was just rambling on about how great it. You know, I was pretty much gargling Kratos's balls right there for, for the first two minutes of the video. But no, that's the immersion level. Like when you're in it, you are you you're in Midgar. Like you're there. Um, and I think they did a fantastic job. This is how I think I already said this once. I'm very tired. I just got home from work. This is how you reboot a series. This is how you do it. And the best part is, is that, uh, you know, Atreus is his son and you do go around with him, but it's not an escort mission. You don't have to look out for him. He handles himself. You don't have to worry about him. He's there for uh, story progression. And, um, you know, Kratos doesn't have his bow and arrow in this one like he did in, in the others. And, he, you know, he doesn't have his... Uh, Actually, he, he doesn't have a bow and arrow, but he does have his own runic moves, which takes place to really like the magic, like using the Medusa's head or the Helios's head and all that stuff. Uh, it just goes attached to your weapon. Now, let's talk about this, because I've been getting in a fight with somebody for like the last month on this. Uh, um, I'm part of this gamer thing on, on uh, Facebook, this gamer group, where it's basically like a bunch of people like me, and, and we just talk about games with each other. We rap about them. This one dude has not bought the game, has not played this game. Claims to be a fan of the original God of Wars. Um, you know, the PSP ones, uh, the PS2 ones, the PS, you know, PS3, God of War 3, and Ascension. He claims to be fans of all of them. He won't buy this game because he thinks that the combat is different. So let's go into that hook right away. The combat is different, but not so far different. Um, there's no jumping. That's pretty much it. They took away the jumping. Uh, I don't want to, and this is the reason I didn't want to do any video of me talking over it. I don't want to ruin anything for you if you've never, if, if you haven't played this game. Don't watch anything about it. Don't talk to anybody about it. Just play it. It's so worth it. And there's one point in it where I'm telling you, the gameplay hasn't changed drastically. The way you move around has changed drastically. Um, you know, the camera's in really close. It doesn't zoom back out. Now, when you're fighting, it, it feels more like a, um, it feels more like a Dark Souls that's locked in. And it only starts that way. The The combat progresses with you. I tried to explain this to, to people multiple times in this. The, the combat progresses with you. The more badass Kratos becomes, the more stuff you unlock, the more moves you unlock. And it actually reminds me, um, it reminds me a lot of, of Devil May Cry. You know what I mean? Because you have this basic set of moves and... Uh, and Devil May Cry 3, I think it reminds me of Devil May Cry 3 the best. You have the set of moves, and then as time goes on and you get more you know, used to those moves, and then you go into your skills, you buy another one, you buy another one, and you buy another one, and then you work it into your gameplay. And it basically, by the end of it, you come out feeling like a god of war. You know, you went in feeling like old man Kratos, and then you come out feeling like the badass that you were in the original three games. So I think the combat was executed very well. 
Um, I had the difficulty up higher. I, I played through more than half of the game with the difficulty way up. And then I had to drop it down in order to beat the story. But you can keep changing the uh, the difficulties. Uh, so I can move the difficulty back up now that I'm done with the main story. Uh, and it's rewarding that way, too, playing it on a higher difficulty. I mean, it's nice if you're going to muscle through the story. You can play it on a lower difficulty and just breeze through it. But I did some of the dungeons, like the extra dungeons, where you go in and, and an enemy is stacked way higher than you because the difficulty's up. And, you know, you can't just go in hack and slash. you got to fight smart. And that's what I like about it is there are sections where you go in like old Kratos and you just tear shit up. And then there's sections where it's like you need to approach it a completely different way or you're going to die over and over and over and over again. Um, the most important part and what makes this now, because originally God of War 2 was my favorite, um, just the sheer epic scale. And I used to think that God of War was uh, um, a great story. God of War 1 through 3, that whole epic story was was uh, amazing. I personally think the story of this is better than God of War 1, 2, and 3 combined. <laughs> uh, you know, God of War was, was fun. He was a real ragey guy. Uh, he was mean, angsty, blah, blah, blah. And now that he's older and he's a dad, I guess, uh, you know, uh, and he's got a big beard. <laughs> Uh, I resonate with the character a lot. Obviously, I'm no fucking Greek god. Um, but I'm a huge fan of Greek mythology. And I know bare minimum about Norse mythology. So a lot of this stuff in this game, I know the characters. But as we all know, they uh, Corey Balrog said that he had five games planned for this shit. So bring them on. Um, because this is a nice enclosed story. Obviously, it left an open ending. I mean, you should have seen that coming. This is a reboot of a series in a different mythology. And we had three in the last mythology that was its own encompassing story. But uh, the development of Kratos as not just the character, but as him as a dad. Because you didn't get to see this aspect. You got to see him raging against gods because he was a dad. And this one, you actually get to see him be a dad and and that uh it's hard to talk about without ruining things so i'll just say like he starts off cold and then he becomes a dad throughout the game and it's really awesome to see on a character that you only really saw one dimension of uh on the past consoles in the past iterations so not only is this like a reboot as in like it's a new mythology it's a reboot as in it's like a new kratos but it's the same guy trust me it's the same guy uh, you know, maybe I'll do a spoiler video if you guys want to see a spoiler video because there's so much I could talk about with the characters and, you know, past events and blah, blah, blah that intermingle in this, you know, and uh, what we see, and blah, blah, blah. And Norse mythology. I'm going to say this because this pisses me off and all these groups are you know saying it's a spoiler. Don't ruin the game, blah, blah, blah. Everyone needs to stop calling that first boss fight. It's rugged. The first boss fight is one of the best boss fights in fucking gaming. It's one of the most awesome introductions to the boss of a game. Uh, you fight, he's called the Stranger. Now, he's clearly a Norse god because he stands up to Kratos and tosses him around. They crack the earth when they're clenching fingers. I mean, that shit was awesome. Uh, it's, it's so great. I can't. This is in the beginning, so I'm not really ruining anything for you. But everyone calls him the stranger. Now, he's a Norse god, and he says right in the beginning that he can't feel anything that's happening to him. That's Balder. Why are we still calling him the stranger? Do a little research, please. Anyways, uh, so, you know, you're you're going to fight Balder. And what's great about it is, uh, it's, it's just, uh, I want to ruin it for you, but but I don't. But anyways, uh, so, so I said, the immersion level is, is fantastic. Uh, the gameplay, while it's different, it's kind of not different. It just feels like a more refined, uh, original God of War gameplay if you layered it over the Souls games. So my biggest complaint about Souls games is that it's glitchy as fuck. This combat is fluid as fuck. Um, so it's a weird balance of it will be familiar to God of War players. You can change your controls, um... You can't customize the controls. You do presets. So you can do like an old preset one. And there's no jumping aer aerial attacks, but you're not going to miss them. Uh, the Leviathan Axe is a worthy successor to the Blades of Chaos. Trust me, just play the game. Please. <laughs> uh, and the depth of the combat is great. And the story is fantastic. I cannot wait for more. If they left everything the same and just put a new story and they released 
you know, uh, God of War 2 reboot next year. I would buy that shit day one. I would buy the Super Ultra Up Your Ass Edition. I would I, I would give them $120, hands down. I wish I did it on this version. Uh, I believe in this franchise coming back, and I think they, they made it mature in a way that, you know, David Jaffe couldn't. Uh, and the game looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous on a P- uh, PS4 Pro. Totally worth it. Uh, the game looks... I mean, the game looks fantastic on a PlayStation 4 Vanilla, too, so it doesn't really matter. But the the whole package. God of War is the whole package. And uh, you guys know how I feel about Last of Us. I think this might be my favorite... My favorite PlayStation exclusive um, as of recent. Yeah. I think this just might be my favorite PlayStation exclusive. Period. Yeah, so I'm not into giving numbers at all. I'd rather say something like, I'll give it two ham sandwiches and a, a, a bag of chips. No, uh, if I was to rate the old God Awards because I did enjoy them, uh, I would you know, I would rate them ranging from mm, seven to eight. Uh, and then I would give this one a, a 10 out of fucking 10, and it is deserving. Go out and buy it. It's going to be worth every penny to you. There is so much shit to do. It takes like 25 hours to, to get to uh, <coughs> do the main story. And then you got another like 25 hours worth of side missions to do. So it's pretty solid when you think of God of War being a 50-hour game for completionists. Uh, it's great. It's great. And it's awesome It's awesome to see a resurgence in like single-player games like this coming back. You know what I mean? Because, you know, God of War, while well, someone had told me that the, the boss fights and stuff are a little underwhelming comparative to, you know, fighting big enemies in Monster Hunter, the problem is Monster Hunter, you're fighting with other people. I don't like playing games online. And seeing seeing single-player games making a resurgence and becoming big deals, like big cultural deals, I mean, the memes going around, boy, boy, the illiterate God of War, by the way, because he can't read anything, so that's pretty much what it is. You're always yelling at a trace. Boy. What does it say? <laughs> um, it's awesome, man. And that cliffhanger was great. Go out and get this shit. Thank you guys for watching.